Don't worry, no raccoons or tree creatures were harmed in the making of this movie. Hi YouTube community, I'm Lexi here and this is Lexi's Weekly Lexicon. So I just got back from the movies and I saw Guardians of the Galaxy, so I thought I'd talk with you today about that. Don't worry, there's not too much spoilers, really. Okay, so first off, with the critics, so on Rotten Tomatoes, they scored a 92 on the tomato meter, which is pretty good, not that many movies get that high, and then on the audience meter, they scored a 96. So that is very rare that audience and tomato meter is both very high. Most of the time it's either one or the other. I usually go on audience because I feel like they're more generous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I tend to think that they go more like oscar -y movies and that might not be so much that audience might like because they might be a little more dry and boring. Um, but this one is both good, which was really a shocker. That's what kind of convinced me to go see it. I kind of wanted to see it just to be, um, you know, keep up with the plot of the Marvel because I'm into all the Avengers and Thor and all those type of movies. But when I saw the trailers for it, I thought it was a little bit more campy and I thought it would just be like one of those like stupid comedy things. And while it's interesting, I just don't want to pay the like $12 for a movie ticket to go see it. I actually thought it was really, really funny. And I'm not that much into comedy. Uh, I like a lot of comedies, but I don't know, I feel like there's a place for it. Like, I like to go to the movie theaters for action movies. And that's why I see, like, all the Marvel ones. That's most of the shows I watch in the movie theaters. And so I was kind of a little apprehensive about it. And I went, and it's really, really funny. It's like every five seconds there's like jokes and they're like, they're not that stupid. They have a few like really stupid jokes that are funny because they're so stupid. But there's really like genuinely, I don't think I remember being at a movie theater where every five seconds the whole audience was dying laughing. Uh... It was really, it was really interesting. I was dying. Um, but yeah, and there's just like some really like genuine comedic good liners. And a lot of sarcasm, which I love. I'm very sarcastic myself, so I like to watch people try to hide that in there. And then also with the characters, I'm kind of obsessed with a lot of little, like, creatures and stuff. So I was very much looking forward to Rocket, because I was like, oh my god, he looks so cute. Like, I'm going to love this. And I don't know, I wasn't too impressed with him. Also, I did not recognize Bradley Cooper's voice. It was a lot deeper and different, so that was a big shocker. Um, I wouldn't have noticed it was him. Uh, same thing with, uh, Vin Diesel, but, uh, I think that's because I am Groot was all he could say. So it might be hard to get the, you know, voice from just three words. But anyway, uh, I thought it was a really good mix. There was... You know, action and fighting, obviously. Wouldn't be Marvel without it. And then there was a lot of comedy thrown in there, you know, interchanged. And there was actually not, not like any drama that's like, oh, sappy. But you got to like get a back history of every character. 
and that kind of like brought them together that they all like had gone through loss and they all were you know with their family or whatever and they all kind of you know through being you know outlaws and kind of looked down upon were able to like become heroes and you know kind of flip it and everybody was not counting them to do so good and they kind of like proved everybody wrong so I kind of like that uh, portion of it um, but yeah and it kind of made you just feel like for like Gamora and stuff like that you kind of like realize like what made her into this like assassin and, and everybody else like you kind of realize like oh you know this is what makes you know bullies and villains and stuff like that like something bad happened to them and that's how they kind of like show their anger so I kind of liked that point into it uh you know kind of that these once bad guys are seen then as good guys like also in Maleficent when I was seeing that that I really liked to see the villain side of it because I feel like there's always another side to the story I live in a world of gray and I'm very objective and there's a reason why someone acts the way they do and it's important to see that so I kind of I like that like a lot more movies are kind of going into that feel so after the credits you know it wouldn't be Marvel without having their after credits uh, they do it literally it ends there's a black screen for a second and then it starts the during the credit scene which is hilarious so stay bunch of people were leaving when it was still going on I was like it was the cutest thing ever um so I don't want to spoil it but yeah it was really funny and then you have to sit through the whole credits um they're not that long as like some action movies but they're you know pretty long and at the very end there's um a scene it's it's really not anything to do with the plot or anything it's not a you know foreshadowing to another one I really don't think so um but yeah I mean you can watch them online too uh you know after the credits has well, that's always my go-to if there's stuff gonna be shown all together with the whole Marvel Thor, I've seen them all. And if you were to skip this, that's totally fine. I feel like in the last Avengers movie, I believe it was, where they had the, you know, they talked about the stone and how there's this gauntlet that holds like the five stones. And, or, I think, yeah, it's five, because all the, uh, um, but yeah, it holds all the stones, and then you become this, like, powerful ruler, um, but you already know that from the other films, so it's really just finding another stone. I thought it was going to be more, I thought they were going to, like, find all of the stones at that point. Um, I guess we already found two prior so this makes the third one then I guess and the thing is like what was I don't want to spoil that okay spoiler don't listen for a second so fast forward for a minute so you don't see the spoiler so back in the Avengers I believe it was after the credit scene they had uh, them bring the stone to the collector and in this one spoiler, they have they go to the collector to sell him the other one so then one he have two of the stones and they end up 
but yeah, I won't spoil anything, but he has at least one already, so I'm like, what's going on? So I'm just curious, because they made it, you know, like there's going to be another Guardians of the Galaxy, so we'll see. Hopefully soon this gauntlet comes up, although if anybody watched in Thor, I believe it's the first one. They had, you can see it, like, if you froze the frame or so, um, or, like, looked really quickly, they have, when he walks past this room, just, like, in the back corner, like, a little art, you know, nook, there's the glove, like this, and, you know, for the stones to go in it, so, that's, like so far ahead foreshadowing so I, I love when they have those little easter eggs and things oh also at the very ending right before they have the last after the credit scene there's a little marker that says no raccoons or tree creatures were harmed in the making of this movie which I thought was so funny. Um, it was just like, you know, another little like, not Easter egg, but it was just like another little, you know, funny thing to add in, uh, which kind of just so fit with the movie. Plus was the music. My dad was talking about it all the time too, was that uh, they have the music played throughout like, you know, a little bit more, like, classic, um, pop music, uh, from the 70s and 80s, I believe, and, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, you know, they had, um, what, The Runaways, and, uh, the Hooked on a Feeling one, um, that was played a lot, but, uh, yeah, it was, it's pretty funny. I liked the whole music um, part of it because that really added to the comedy and the whole thing. And it still stuck playing in my head like that one scene you will know when you finish watching the movie. Like, it's just going to be stuck in your head. <laughs> so be prepared to then be singing all these old pop music. Um, yeah. But it's good, you know. Uh, very, uh, I thought it was a very light-hearted, good summer movie. So, you know, it was something that's going to make you laugh. It's going to be like a little bit of, uh, you know, action and, uh, you know, a little plot, you know, a little storyline there and, um, but you know, it's something that's like very calming, you know, it's not like intense or it makes you really have to think about how things were going, you know, it's very simple, uh, progress and stuff, so, yeah, and I don't think it's really that, well, I guess, I guess it's violent, but it's so comedic, you don't really notice any of the violence, and plus also the music, it's just so like, like Carlton type um, dance, you know, music. Um, so it really, it's, you know, it's like if they play music while they're killing people, that's like all like, da 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 da. Um, it, it doesn't make it seem like it's that bad. <laughs> but yeah, so I hope you go see it, and I hope you like it, and write in the comments how it was, and if you found any easter eggs or any, um, you know, plot, like how, what do you think is going to happen next in the next one, and throughout the rest of the series. So, thanks for watching. Uh, have a nice rest of the week. Lex out.